it out right here. Me and Damien come out here to this place. Look at some trucks we got work on. Look at that, Damien. Come on. Oh, there's the little thing where you drive it at the seat captain's thing. Go on up in there. Go. You all right? You gonna get on it? Huh? I think this one that goes on the street. This is a street when it drives. Like down the wheels underneath it. And a motor. See it? That's why it's got a steering wheel. I'm not here today. Put some LED resistors on this thing. He, he tried putting a relay in it, or flasher in it, flasher relay, and he kept kept flashing fast. So I put some resistors on the front and the rear. Got Josh in there going through. Josh and Damien inside, putting a valve cover on a 5.4 liter. Check out old C10 right here. I like that had old thing right there. Thing got potential. But I'm almost done for today. It's Friday. Let me get this boot back around. He wanted me to check the turbo while I was at it. So I pulled the boot off of it. That way I could go through and check for shaft play and stuff. Everything feels good, so it's looking pretty good. <clears throat> 2016 GMC, the default code for transmission temperature. So uh, these things got like little thermostats in them and all kind of stuff. But what I did, I put it on the transmission setting, the temperature, and I'm watching it right around and it's jumping all around. So I know the temperature sensor on the harness is bad. And the sign of it is see right there 100 102 it'll jump 104 112 back down these thermostats these things are supposed to run it up there to uh 180 degrees it, like it'll run up to 180 degrees and the thermostat will open so you're not going to get fluctuation like this 106 109 you're not going to get fluctuation back and forth sorry about that my uh, hand making it blur but you're not going to go through and get fluctuation like that with a thermostat deal. You know what I mean? Like it's not gonna go through right there. It says 118 now, 120. Like it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna constantly get warm until it gets up to 180 degrees and then it's gonna stay steady there. And this thing right here, why it's heating up, it's jumping all around. Big numbers, like it ain't, like right there. It jumps 124, back down 122. So that tells me that temperature sensor on the wiring harness is bad. See it in this way, it's just all over the place. So I come over here to Nigel's, turn around and uh, pull the pin off of it. It's pretty easy to do. On these Chevrolets here, they are uh, pretty easy. Knock the filter off of it, pull all your pan bolts out, you gotta wrench two of them out, you can slide it out with the exhaust on it. So. I got a new wiring harness, which is right there in the pan. I didn't clean the pan up and washed it out. I got a new filter I'm unboxing, new gasket, and the thermostat on the other side. It's about $380 my cost on parts. So I'm gonna get in here and show y'all how to take this wiring harness off, replace it, and then put everything back together. So we're gonna start by pushing these little dots right here and pulling these out. Each one on the harness here, pull them like that. And this is a harness we're replacing because it has a little temperature sensor built in right there on it. And that's what's faulty on this one right here. It just had too much fluctuation. So you want to plug everything that attaches to this. Got to hook it over here, unplug it there. And go around and get everything unplugged. Sorry. This unplugged. Get that unhooked. Get all this pulled down. These squeeze inwards. And that's how you get those out to get that harness down. There should be another one over here. So let's get it pulled out real quick. This one right here is like a BMW style. It flips up like that to get that harness loose right there. So let me get it all unplugged real quick. I like to show y'all anything that's different. And this connector here has a tab. You pull down on it and then you can squeeze the tab to unplug it. And there it is, it's pretty easy. These back ones up here, they got little tabs right here on the side of them that you push. A little tab there and this one has one that pushes from the bottom the purple one has a tab right there that you should you oh right there it is push from the bottom you push a little purple square there to release it other than that it's pretty straightforward let's put it back together well i well i absolutely forgot to do a video of driving on the way home i drove it on the way home we got up to 180 181 degrees and stayed consistent it was jumping up in like 
two degree increments. It didn't do that crazy thing where it went from 100 to 109 to 120 in no time. It actually just crawled up there slowly, got there, and stayed steady at 180 to 181 all the way down the road. So that took care of the problem. And what it was was that thing, that sensor, it was reading, but what it was doing, it was making crazy, crazy changes. So when they go bad like that, when they get up in the temperature, you'll be riding along and it might be 180 degrees, but it might jump up over 200 and drop back down and do crazy stuff. But that took care of it, so appreciate you. So me and Damien done put a cam sensor in this morning. Still gonna need a uh, set of timing change in, in the vehicle. Right here, open this gate up for me right here, son. Just gotta flip that handle up and then push the gate open. Now, me and Damien on our way over here to check out a turbo truck I done. Sorry, somebody was calling. But me and Damien's on our way over here to look at this little turbo truck. It has a little water leak on it. Project I done a while back. I suspect it's probably going to be the heater connectors at the, uh, at the heater core because that's usually what leaks on these trucks and stuff like that. So I'm going to check it out real quick. Let's check it out and see what's going on. Alright, so that wound up being a simple uh, one of the steam ports on the back of the heads on the LS motors. His has aftermarket ones that are bolted on. Well, I guess one had vibrated loose over time, so I was able just to, we found it, diagnosed it real quick, tightened it up, charging $30 for coming out here. Simple, easy. Now we're on to our next job where we're going to here and tear apart a transmission, figure out why it stopped uh, pulling and all that. I think I'm pretty sure it changed the burger and then it wouldn't go forward or back or nothing. So I'm pretty sure they didn't get the pump set deep enough in it and it broke the pump gear. So let's get on down here. I planned everything. Like I said, this is best for city. Go past the stop. Then at the next one, turn left. This is best for city we're in now. Now we're going to Kings Mountain. They're right beside each other. So I had all three of these jobs next to each other. I got a fourth one on the way back. We're going to stop and check the heat on a car that's in Gastonia. So we're just making one trip out of it, all this area. At the stop sign, turn left onto East Virginia Avenue. So we come down here, pull the pump, pull it out of it, pull the pump apart. There you go. Converter was not seated all the way. So it broke the gears right here. Then it also, let me set it uh I know it might just have to, be, might be able to put some gears in it. I think we can. It feels pretty smooth. Let me look at it a little bit better. So the first thing we're gonna do is go up underneath here and see if the blower motor has power on it. Because if it has power and it has a ground on it, then that tells us that the uh, motor itself is bad. So I got gun here to get my thing. Let me see my light real quick, son. So you got video on it. So we got power on onto it. That doesn't mean that we have ground. To get a ground, we got we got to make sure that when we touch it right here, I need something to shove up in there. We got to make sure that we have ground right here. So I got to go get something to stick up in there. That way I can jump it across it. Once I jump it across it, if it has power on both sides of it, then we know we got a bad blower motor. Do give me a, uh, hold on one second. Let me get it where I need it to be at. I right, you can video it. All right, so I put a voltmeter on it right here. I got my power and my negative. So when I turn it on, we're getting four volts there, four volts there. It should be going up with continuity right there. And then when we're on high, we ain't getting no kind of volt. So it might have a bad blower resistor. But let's see. I'm gonna check the blower resistor out now and I think it's gonna be bad. So I've gone through and uh, this is the blower resistor. You can tell it looks pretty bad. But I, this is the wire. So we're getting power to the actual fan, but we're not getting no, uh, no the ground side, which works off the resistor side. So I go through and touch this and we have 
air so we know our blower motor is good. So now I need to go through and test to make sure that them controls, when I send a signal, I'm getting a ground wire to these right here. And if I'm getting a ground on each one of them, then that tells me my resistor's bad and it's not looping through to contact the, the blower on the uh, motor. So we'll test that real quick. We'll be right, right back with you. I went between my power wire here that feeds my fan that comes on with my ignition. The ignition feeds power to the fan and then the ground works the fan. So this is my fan. This right here wire is the wire feeds my fan. So these three wires here, if you look, when the fan's on zero, we ain't getting no voltage out of it. But as soon as we cut it on, we're getting voltage. So that tells us that we have a bad blower resistor on this car right here. The blower resistor's gone bad. So we're gonna unplug it and go get one and then uh, we'll have this thing done for today. Well, if I can get it unplugged, if it ain't melted, might be melting. All right, Damien. No. We had stuck some plugs in this thing real quick. Damien says he likes this truck right here. It's got a lot of room inside of it. I mean, it's a nice truck. It really nice. is. It's a 270 Eco Boost. Damien says it don't run bad at all. No. Nice, smooth. Can't even hear the motor run, can you? No, not at all. It drives good. Oh yeah, it's a very, very nice truck. A friend of mine, David, has. Stop sign. Good. I ain't gonna lie, to you. I'm not Drive. Crazy. Me and Damien come to Charlotte, take a look. Me and Damien come to Charlotte, and he had jack in the box there for a side. Like, well, we'll stop and get some. Wait in line for like 30 freaking Turn minutes. left. Then turn there, left. Wait, 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 wait. We're stuck in this line. I tell her what I want. Oh, I want my combo and all this stuff. Get to the window, which shows like $10.30. I said, Damien, that's not right. I was like, she didn't get a combo for one of them. So I said, hey, I said, it's supposed to be a, uh, that's supposed to be a combo. She said, oh, well, we can't really do add-ons at the window or whatever. That don't come as a combo. Can't really do add-ons at the window. Uh, we gotta turn that second street up here. I think is what it is. Let me see what turn it is. Turn left onto Pritchard Street. Yep, turn left on then turn left onto she Pritchard Street. She said, we don't really do add-ons at comp. We can't do add-ons at the window. My manager's here and I'm not trying to get in trouble. So I told Dame, I said, just drive off. Drive off. So we wasted 30 minutes, 35, maybe even 40 minutes sitting there at that freaking thing, not even getting no food. So at the next stop sign, turn left. So they can just keep their food. So we're gonna go on do this job, then we'll go by Wendy's or something when we leave, and they can just not get our business today. All right, guys, well, me and Damien got here this morning, got this uh, clutch out of this thing, had a bad clutch, a release bearing in it went bad, and that this arm would flex all the way over as far as it could go, and it couldn't release the clutch at all, and it would just turn around and uh, it would just keep pulling. So we pulled the transmission out this morning, done the clutch on it and all that, clutch, flywheel, pressure plate, Release bearing. Now I'm waiting on advance so I can get the fluid. Damien just got the wheels up on here. So I'm gonna go through and uh, I'm gonna pop the little, it has a feel from the side. I'm gonna pop the feel out of it. We're gonna go through and fill it up. We'll be ready to rock and roll. Take it back to him today. You know that mobile mechanic life. <laughs> Damn, this bitch holds a lot of oil. So we was on our way home earlier. And Daniel here, he called, he says, hey, something's spraying out of the Jeep. It's busted, Dan. It's busted right here. Watch when he takes off and it freaking missed his, like, antifreeze over the windshield on this thing Jeep. We put two gallons of water and I told him just get it going, cut it off and coast it as far as he can and turn around and uh, we'll get it to my house if we're not that far. I'll put a radiator in tomorrow. Oh, 